Hey everybody, welcome to this week's live stream. Hope you're all doing good today. Um, so today we're gonna be making some water themed blanks. Sorry about the title and thumbnail and all kinds of stuff. I had some weird stuff going on, but we got everything figured out. Water themed blanks, doing them vertically. And I'm super excited about these. I posted these on Instagram uh, yesterday and got some really good feedback. So I thought, hey, why don't we just make these on the stream? I'm gonna be adding them to the website. Actually, I've already added them to the website a little prematurely. So if you wanna pre-order, you can see what we're doing and, and all that kind of stuff. And I'll show you the blanks a little bit more, but let me get links to these blanks if you wanna pre-order. Um, I was kind of rushing around trying to get everything set up for the stream today. I was like, this is kind of last minute, but it should be kind of fun, I think. So. Uh, water themed blanks. I think I'm going to call these pool party. Um, I really liked that idea. And I've kind of changed the camera angles a little bit. Look at those colors. I can't wait to make a pen. So we're going to be making a pen out of these things on Saturday. Um, so that should be pretty sweet. Um, but that's what we're doing. And we are going to, I'm busting out. These are brand new. So I was using uh, PVC pipes um, while I was kind of, you know, converting and learning um, the you know the vertical pour method and the thing is if you're going to be doing a lot of these things I think that it's smart to go with silicone um, because you're going to go through a lot of silicone or I mean not silicone um, stoner mold release I was going through a ton of mold release spraying the pipes every time and then you know you're you're plugging and unplugging the pipes um, if you're if you don't do this that regularly like as much as I'm doing them right now then I don't know that you need to get a silicone mold or anything like that the PVC pipes work great they're super cheap however if you are going to be doing quite a few of these I do think it's smart to invest or make uh, a silicone mold. So uh, these guys are available on my website as well. Um, I'm not gonna lie, they're pretty expensive because there's a lot of silicone. But you know, if, if it's something that you wanna get, they are available. So the way these work, um, most of the product, like all the products that I sell, um, they're there. <laughs> you know, like you can just check out, buy them, and I'm gonna ship them in a couple days. When it comes to silicone molds, I don't pre-make these. Um, so once somebody orders one, then I make it. So it's about a week or so lead time. Um, two weeks if I need, if I like run out of silicone for some reason or something like that. Um, but they're available on my website as well. So it should be pretty fun. Uh, we're gonna be kind of diving into um, how I'm doing most of my vertical pours. Um, I kind of have a system and I know that we, we just did a video that kind of showed this, but I actually kind of screwed up on that video and didn't show you the, um, I, I like to use a, a, um, a stick, you know, like a dip stick, I call it kind of thing. Um, so we're gonna do like the whole thing. You can kind of see what, how I do all these things. I thought it'd be kind of fun and we can make some of these really cool looking blanks. So that's what we're doing today. Uh, so what are you guys all up to? It looks like there's some laser work going on. Who was doing the laser? Was that Mark? Mark is doing it, nice. And Dominic. Um, so who was here first? Uh, Mike McEwen was here. And Dominic and Kim, nice. And Cheryl's here, nice. Jim. Oh, the, the abalone blanks, nice. I'm, I'm glad that you like, I love those abalone blanks. Um, that's actually another blank that I'm gonna be converting from square to round. And I gotta be honest, I think that the, the doing them vertically thing um, is that I think they're better um, even <laughs> than than the they, than the the square ones that I sold, which I really liked those too. One of the things that I found about vertical pours that I, that I just never really got um, down, I never really learned a really good system, um, is adding like a super tiny amount of 
um, you know, like, like a wisp of black. Um, that's extremely difficult. I found it really difficult to do pouring into a brick. Um, I, the, the way that I got around it was I just added quite a bit and then you kind of mix it around and everything worked fine. But it was really difficult for me to get like little small amounts. And you can do that, I think, a little bit easier vertically, or at least I'm, I figured it out already kind of thing. And it's simple. You just, you know, mix a tiny bit of, uh, you know, like let's say that I just wanted to add a little black here and there, like in the abalone blanks. You can just pour like a super tiny amount down in there and with those abalone blanks, you get like the perfect amount. You don't get like kind of larger blobs or anything like that. So it's pretty cool. Um, so I'm glad that she liked that. That's really cool. I love those abalone blanks. They're really fun. And who else? I'm missing, let's see, Jean's here. And Mark, Dominic, Copper Owl, how's it going? And I might have missed a few people. I'm sorry if I missed you. Kevin's here. Steve's here. Welcome, welcome. And Donna's here. I might have missed. And Amy's here. Nice. So one little bit of a, a little announcement that I wanted to make. So I'm working on the mystery box. That's why I took last week off. I was working on that. I'm actually working on the, the Christmas ornament video as well. Um, but the mystery box video, here's what we're going to be doing. So we were kind of talking on the last premiere on Sunday, uh, the last mystery box that I did. And uh, quite a few people said that they kind of prefer like uh, an afternoon and a lot of people actually said during the week. I've been kind of thinking about switching up when I release videos. So here's what I came up with. Um, and I think this kind of makes a lot of sense. So we're going to do the premiere for the next mystery box. So number four, we're going to do the premiere next Wednesday um, at 3 p.m. Like when I would normally do a live stream. Um, so we'll do the premiere and that video is only going to be like, you know, like 15 minutes or so. It kind of depends. I haven't finished editing it, but um, somewhere around like the 15 minute mark and then we'll just roll right into the live stream. I thought that like everybody's already here. So let's just do it that way. It'll be kind of fun. So um, that's premiering next uh, Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific time. So I'm really excited about that one. It was it was a really fun project this time. And I think you guys are going to like it. It's Halloween themed. So pretty cool. Just in time. I wanted to get that thing done before Halloween and I did it. I'm excited about that. So, oh yeah, heck yeah, we're doing an ornament. Of course I'm doing an ornament. Actually, I need to talk to you guys because I wanted to sponsor that. So since you're here, I want to be a sponsor. Um, so I'll, I'll have to get with you or Chad or whoever I need to talk to. Um, I've been meaning to, to mention that and I keep forgetting. So I said it now. So anyway, all right. So what we're going to do here, like I said, um, the way I've been doing the vertical pours, I, like I said, switch to these once I figured out um, what <laughs> it took me a while to figure out what material to use for the mold and all that kind of stuff. You know, I, I could have just poured a blank in a, in a PVC pipe. That's the easiest way to go. But um, there's other materials that I think would work a little bit better. PVC pipes, sometimes they can get like a little bend. They may not be like perfectly straight. And you can order materials, um, you know, like acrylic rod or there's actually a ton of different materials. And I'll probably be doing a video down the road on this. I'm, I'm probably not going to show exactly how I do this specific mold um, just because it was really difficult and I don't really want a bunch of people copying me. Um, somebody I'm sure can make one, but uh, you know, I don't want to give the exact, you know, way that I do this specific mold, um, away, but, um, I'm going to do some vertical molds. I, I think what I'm going to do is I haven't made a, a kitless pen mold. So we'll probably do something. I don't know if it's going to look like this or not, but, um, we'll probably do that as the video. And, uh, and I'm gonna, I'll, I'll kind of go through and show you guys what, what material I ended up going with. Um, it, it took, it actually took a little bit of doing to, to find exactly what I wanted. Um, and I ended up ordering every single material, like rod material from McMaster Car. Um, and I found one that I think works great for this kind of thing. But um, anyway, so we'll do that down the road. But this is what I've been using um, and I really like it. Um, again, what I found was I was just going through so much stoner spraying the pipes. And part of the thing is, you know, I, if you're going to be like mass producing blanks, again, I think that you're, you're best off going with silicone because you don't have to deal with plugs and spraying and doing all this different stuff. It's going to hold up a little bit better. PVC pipes can kind of bend and warp, especially if you have a lot of them packed together, like I was doing, um, that heat that the resin can, you know, generate in there can kind of warp the PVC, uh, eventually. 
So just kind of a better way to go with silicone, I think, if you're doing a lot of them. If you're only doing a few blanks, then there's really no reason to spend a bunch of money buying a, a silicone mold or making one because the silicone, even if you make it yourself, is expensive. So um, PVC pipes, super cheap, <laughs> you know, just Home Depot. And then the, the plugs from Turner's Warehouse make everything super simple. So, um, you know, smaller amounts, PVC pipes, totally. Um, cheaper, easier, quicker. You can do, you know, any length that you want really quick, buy a little bit more. Um, this is, you know, you, you really kind of need to know how long do you need this? And, and this is a little bit more like you're stuck with it kind of thing, you know? So anyway, so these are making three quarter inch. It's exactly three quarter inch holes. Um, just to let you guys know, um, it's not like the 0.81 um, like the, the PVC pipes were. So I think in some cases it's a little bit better. You're gonna use a little bit less resin. And I don't know that there's any advantage really to having a 0 0.8, 0, uh, yeah, 0.81 size blank. It's actually more difficult for people. Um, you have to go and find a specific collet size if you're doing um, kitless, you know? So anyway, that's that's all that's all that I, I have to say about that. So let's get rolling with this. Now, one thing I wanna mention is I one of the days I was really messing around with cameras and I have a little bit of a slightly different camera angle on the overhead. It's angled and you're upside down now. Um, I could flip it, but it's gonna be kind of awkward being on an angle. So the thing is the light, like I'm not gonna have as much problem. Um, one of the issues I used to have was if I would zoom in, things would get super dark because it was like right under the camera and the lights were right above the camera. So the camera blocked out all my light. Now you can zoom all the way in and it's still bright. And I, I just think it's a little bit of a better angle. So I'd love to hear any feedback if anybody has any on this. I, I think it's fine. I mean, I mean, I don't really think that anybody's going to really be like, oh, it's terrible. But I just wanted to mention that. And then <clears throat> I have a wider angle on this side. I don't know how useful this side is now. Um, I think you can see a lot more stuff um, being kind of on an angle. So either way, we got two cameras. I just wanted to let you guys know what was going on with these things um, before we began. So with all that said, I've been talking a lot. I'm gonna shut up. Let's do some resin casting. So uh, like I said in the comments, let me know what you guys are. Oh, let's see, Donna has been working on some polymer clay, that's cool. Um, actually, and you said air dry clay, um, when we were in Hawaii, so um, Gretchen and I go to the Big Island a lot, that's where we got married. And so we go there as often as possible, maybe every like four years or something. Um, and there's this clay store, <laughs> clay like flower uh, type thing. Anyway, this guy makes, and it's actually, it was, it was, it was an older lady that, that started this, but um, we went in there and they had classes on how to do this. And like, you can just make the most amazing, crazy things out of clay and it's just air dried. And so it was really fun. We did a class on that and we were making some really cool like flower things and turtles and I was terrible, but Gretchen did pretty good. <laughs> the guy that does it. So he's actually like the, the um, not stepson, the son-in-law of the lady that started this whole thing. And we've been going there. I mean, we got married, how many years ago? Like two, 2009. And we saw it then, this store, and we've walked by it a thousand times and we've never really gone into it. Uh, and they have like such cool stuff. And then we realized there was a class the last time we were in Hawaii and we're like, we're totally taking this. And I totally wrote it off. <laughs> Cause I was like, I could probably use this somehow. Um, at least something about this in my, my job or my work kind of thing. So oh, let's see here. Anyone else doing anything cool? Anybody got any uh, Halloween projects that you're working on? Yes. So um, one thing I want to clear up, I'm going to start calling the, the, the subscription mystery box, the, the blanks that people subscribe to and get every month. That's going to be called the subscription box from now on because it's just way too confusing even for me to talk about mystery boxes because there's two of them. So mine is not called a mystery box anymore. We're calling it subscription box. Uh, if I'm referencing blanks that we're making that are going in that mystery box is only going to be the boxes that Turner's Warehouse sends me. All right, that's what mystery boxes are. All right, so I'm just going to give you guys a the you know the things the, the videos the normal videos where we make a project i don't know what's in there 
that's going to be a mystery box from now on subscription is the blanks that i send people just to clarify that it just is too confusing there's stuff for your horror movie pens that's cool that's fun okay so i'm going to switch to this overhead view i really like this view it's so nice so we only need one and these are two different types of uh, silicone by the way um the color um it may vary uh, when you when you order one of these things um, they're two different silicones they both work exactly the same i just have some of each um, and i was looking at this stuff um, i don't really think there's any advantage you really can't see inside so it's just a matter of you know one's red one's white <laughs> so whatever just to let you know um, so we'll just go with the red one because i think it looks prettier um, today now one thing that i do all the time I find it really helpful to just dump this thing into a big bucket like this. That way you can just make as much of a mess as you want and then pick the bucket up. It makes it easy to pick it up even if there's like resin running all over the place. You got something to pick this thing up and just toss it in your pressure pot and you're not gonna get resin and junk all over your pressure pot too. So this works really well for me. Um, I don't have to really do a whole lot. I still put down a little mat. I like these little absorbent pad things. You can see I've been playing around with some different colors here. I like to do that just because the cups end up dripping all over the place. And that way I don't stick my elbow in it after the fact. But um, this makes it easy to kind of load. Um, let me put these things. I need to put these blanks somewhere. I'm going to put these over here. Okay. So now i was going through um the, the reason that i came up with these is i wanted to to kind of revamp my aqua blanks that i sell on my website they're like a blue with some silver in them and i wanted to kind of just redo it and make something that looked kind of like ocean waves and like like the, the the reflection of like a pool kind of thing that's why i'm calling them pool party um, and so what i came up with for the colors and to be honest you know you could you can copy these but but there's a lot of different colors that you can go with and I, I just decided to go with different blues and i found three from eye candy that that create this blank again i don't know that these colors specifically are that important i do think that the different shades that's going to be important in something like this um, so if you can just get you know like a lightish kind of color blue a medium and then a dark you're gonna get kind of the same result here, all right? So what I came up with is Okinawa blue. This is a new one to me. Oh, that's backwards, huh? Is that backwards on your screen? Huh. I might have to reverse that. Why is it backwards? Huh. <laughs> is that, that's, why is it backwards? Um, no, you don't have to use mold release. You could. Yeah, the puppy pee pads. Um, you could. Is that backwards? It is backwards. Oh, my goodness. What on earth is going on here? Um, <laughs> that doesn't help a whole lot. How do I... Uh, what if I do this? Nope. Flip hor I need to flip it like horizontally. Huh. Why is it? Oh my God. I don't even know how to fix that. Why is it? Huh. All right, guys, I'm going to have to figure that out some other day, but <laughs> this is Okinawa blue. Um, this is dark ocean blue. Does it work? How? Huh. That is the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. Huh. Would you? I don't even know how that's even possible. It's like a mirror. And no con blue. <laughs> Sorry, I am very confused about that. Um, those are the colors that we're using today. Let's get this, I'm just gonna put that thing right there. That's good. Okay, so let me get my little book out. Maybe there's like a, God. 
Let me. Oh. Ah. Here we go. There we go. I figured it out, guys. Figured it out. Okay. Figured that out. One problem solved today. I'm doing great. All right. So today is 1019. 1019. We're doing pool party. Pen blanks. Plus, I love silicone molds because they're like jello and they just kind of wiggle. Um, we're going to be using the Gat... I'm calling these the Gatling molds. And... Um, we're using Slow Set Clear Alumilite today. So this mold... So I, I, I believe that each tube... So it's a 6-inch deep hole and they're 3-quarter inch. And so I think that 50 grams per tube will work. I like to go over and then we fill Happy Fun Cup, of course. Okay, so um, I'm going to go with 400 grams. You really probably only need about 350, but that may be a little bit kind of close. So I would even say like fudge it a little bit, go to like 360, 380, you know, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, so we're doing 400 total. Um, we're going to split these. Let's see here. I like to do, let me look at my thing. I got notes over here. Um, one of the nice things is you can kind of like play around with how much you put and that will give you slightly different results. Like I, I was mentioning that, you know, you can get kind of very small, you know, amounts. I'm not trying to do like really small amounts. Like we're just kind of mixing these three, you know, blues. I think you get a really awesome thing. You could just go, go, you know, thirds on these, but I want a little bit less of the blue, uh, the dark blue and medium blue and a little bit more of this. I really like this Okinawa, that, that color. It just kind of, that's, I don't know. To me, that's the pool partiness. So where are my notes here? I gotta find my notes. Okay, so just slightly, um, I, I just slightly changed this. So I'm going 40% Okinawa. And then 30 and 30. So, you know, not a big deal, but I do want just a little bit more of the, the lighter blue in there. And then, so no con, and then um, dark ocean. So 40% of 400 is probably three, I don't know, something. I don't know how much that is, 160. Yeah, so we got 160 and then 130, 130 total and then we're gonna put in a teaspoon of Okinawa I've been putting in a lot more I'm fine I'm really liking I think you're way better off especially on pens putting a ton of mica powder in so one teaspoon for the Okinawa we're gonna go with three-quarter teaspoon on the other two okay so that's all we need for our notes. Let me see if there's any way mo better. I know, I'm telling you. No longer me. I know everything was mirrored. It was weird. I don't know what was going on. Maybe I had it um maybe I had art I, the only thing I can think of is that when I had it directly overhead, I flipped it vertically and I think I might have done something weird. I don't know. I don't exactly know what I was what the problem was there. But <clears throat> but I did it. Okay, so we're gonna just reuse these cups here. Okay, so I just mix it all in one big cup. Oh, I think I broke that cup. These ones crack really easy, these smaller pint cups. It's been really annoying. There we go. Just kind of scrape out a little bit of the excess junk don't worry i got another small one i'm trying to reuse as many things as i as possible again i got to give credit to uh steve mcdonald on that 
it kind of got me in the mode of like, okay, I can reuse these sticks. I can just clean them off. I can do this and that cups. Um, I used to do everything kind of in brand new cups a lot of times. I just, it was easier for me um, to do certain things, but I'm now that I'm, I think you're better off starting this way. Don't, don't start the way that I did. That's how I started and I just got used to it. And so it's just one of those things that you just got to give yourself a little bit of time to get used to a new method. It's tough after you've been doing things for like five years or longer, you know, well, in my case, like 10 to, to be like, oh, I'm going to just switch how I do this because it just feels weird, you know. <laughs> You saw my thumbnail and you just want to eat it. Nice. Yeah, I, there's there can be small specs here and there. In this case, like you got to where I do not use like reuse cups is if I'm doing dead clear castings, you're going to get some stuff. But like if a little chunk kind of, you know, comes off. I, a lot of times I'll try to reuse like the same colors um, in, in different cups or something similar. Um, so I'm probably not going to mix white in a cup that I did black in last time because you're going to get little black specks in there. So just, I don't know, a couple things. But it does make things a lot cheaper and easier. And these cups, out of all of them, the paint mixing cups really are the best because they're totally smooth. Um, you just, you don't really have any possibility of getting like part A or part B, one of the two parts, like trapped in something where this thing's got these are the best cups that i've found but you know you kind of have these little ridges and things where junk can kind of you know like parts of the part a it's hard to get it all off of there sometimes so it could cause you to not get everything mixed up as well as you'd like <laughs> let's say or have a little bit of unmixed stuff hanging out lurking all right so we're gonna do a little bit of part a so we're gonna put 200 grams of part a in here um, and one thing that can kind of help out, I don't really need to do this today probably, but because it's cool in the shop. Um, but like in the summer or if you're just in a warmer region. Oh, I went a little over. So we're going to go 202. Not a big deal. Um, one thing you can do is, so I want my Okinawa to go into the big cup. So I want to put that, I actually screwed up the first time I did this. Um, <laughs> So I'm going to put that over there, um, get it out of my way. But I'm going to preload my other two cups. So we're going for about three quarter. I usually kind of do heavy three. Uh, this is a quarter teaspoon spoon. I usually do them a little, little heavy. Like I said, more is better when it comes to pen blanks and mica powder. So when I put three quarter, that's like the bare minimum that I would put in there. Um, I'll usually kind of dip a little bit you know it's it's going to be kind of overflowing a lot of times mica powders aren't it's, it's not a big deal with the mica powders you just need to get it to a point where you're not going to see the tube most likely um, and one one little tip I, I will say most of my blanks at this point have so much mica powder in them that you really probably are not going to see the the tube however even I've gotten some where I'm like, oh, we're good. And it's not in like some part of the blank for some reason. Um, maybe, I don't know, it just, the mica settled weird or something like that. So I always recommend just paint the tubes because that way you're not going to get to the end and be like, oh, there's a huge giant chunk of brass tube showing through and I'm really angry. So I'm just going to stop real quick. <laughs> you swear it's a compliment. I, I, I get you, Gabby. I get you um, on, on the compliment there. Sometimes, actually, one of them that, that uh, there's one that I'm like, oh, I just want to eat that. Um, the mint chip ones that I do, the, it's like a kind of, you know, like mint chocolate chip ice cream is kind of the theme. Those ones I'm like, mm, I could just munch on that. And Doug's here. How's it going, Mr. Paul Barn? What are you up to over there in Michigan? Oh, it's 93 in LA. Ugh. Um, yeah, it's only 71 in the shop here. So everything's great. Um, once, once you get to like October, then I'm good until like June, July, maybe even. Um, and it just kind of stays somewhere in like 68 to like 72, maybe 75 in the afternoon. Um, like in the 
you know, early fall and then the late, um, or like, yeah, late, late spring. 40 in Michigan, ugh. Not very fun. And is TBC here? Where did I see TBC? Oh, there he is, Brian. What's up, man? Um, and I got to give a shout out to Brian for these um, silicone plugs. I um, mean, there's a link to these things, uh, but these are for the, the part B or, or any of the parts um, of your gallon. I think it might work on the half gallons too, but um, for these gallon jugs, it makes things so much easier. I still use the cap on the part A because it doesn't cause any issues. It doesn't get like crusty or anything. Um, so the cap is fine. Um, but man, I'll tell you what, for the part B, that cap will just get stuck on Alumalite Clear Slow and so save your, so like I said, link down in the description below for those. So, all right, so we got our um, mica powders preloaded in the two cups and we have our mold ready. And like I said, you could spray this if you want. I, it just, I don't really think it's necessary. Um, epoxies are gonna be harder on molds than urethanes. And so Alumalite Clear Slow which way does it go? Here we go. Alumalite clear and clear slow are urethane resins and they just aren't as hard on, on molds. Um, they demold easier and everything. So I just don't see it necessary for me, um, but it will probably extend the life of your mold if you do use um, you know, a mold release. You can use like the stoner or, or you know, whatever, whatever mold release you want. It will extend the life. I just don't really think it's that necessary. Um, I just wanted to kind of mention that. So we got 201.9. So I'm going to put 202 grams of part B in here. The only thing that I don't really like about these is you always get your fingers kind of gooey <laughs> when you pull these off. Um, I, I kind of, it'd be cool to have like, like a little handle in these things. I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there, Brian. I don't even know if that's possible, but... Just saying, if, if I had a wish list, I, I might wish for that. So 202. Don't want to go over on this. Oh, I went way over. <laughs> I'm talking, not paying attention, obviously. I'm going to add a little bit extra part A. I went pretty far over on that. Man, I'm, I'm doing great today. So one, about 1.5. Probably end up going over on this too. Uh, eek. 1.1. Uh, oh. Close enough. 1.3. Okay. So we have our resin ready. Get me a stick. And I also, um, you can buy HDPE sheets. I think, I want to say this is like 330 seconds maybe. Um, and you can just cut little strips out and they work great for for mixing sticks that are totally reusable i highly recommend wiping them off after you're done before it sets up you can peel it off but sometimes it can get kind of to be a pain in the butt to do it like the next day or whatever um, much better just wiping it off right away and then you can just move on and reuse it right away let's see here any other questions? Is Chad here too? Chad, what's up? I got your text. I was in the middle of stuff and setting up for the stream, so we'll talk. Um, and I told Amy earlier that I I've been meaning to tell you I want to be a sponsor for the, the ornament challenge. So we'll have to kind of get together and figure out what I can sponsor. I was thinking maybe a gift card, maybe a box of blanks or something like that. I don't know, something cool. It'll make people want to get their ornaments to Turner's Warehouse. You have until the 27th of November to get these in. Different categories, prizes are available, guys. And all of the proceeds from the auctions, that they're gonna auction those ornaments off, all the proceeds are going to Toys for Tots. So it's a good cause on top of everything and prizes and fun turning. So. All right, so 130 or so grams in here. One hundred and thirty-one, no big deal. We went way over on the initial pour anyway. Zero that out. It doesn't really matter if this is like exactly 130. I'm just 
while I'm here and have a scale in front of me may as well. You can just eyeball this, I think, though. Okay. Resin all over my hand. So we're going to put a teaspoon of Okinawa blue. I really like this Okinawa. Look at this. I mean, whoa, guys. Where have you been all my life, Okinawa blue? One teaspoonish. <clears throat> okay, so we got our stuff. I'm gonna just mix this in real quick. If you want to, you can also, you know, just, just to make sure everybody knows, I'm not doing that for these, but if you wanna kinda customize your colors a little bit, you can add some dye. Even, you know, with mica, you can mix mix and match. It'll kind of alter the color or make it kind of more unique. Um, so I just wanted to kind of mention that. Lots of different stuff. Now, when you start doing things like that, that's where you kind of want to be a little bit more accurate about, you know, okay, I put a half teaspoon of this and I put like, you know, three drops of that dye, you know. If you're doing specific recipes, then you really kind of need to be locked in on stuff. Um, how much resin do you have and how much powder and all that kind of good stuff. But when you're just dealing with mica powders, like whatever, just get it good enough, you know. Then from there on, you're just adding more. Oh. <laughs> I know, you need to get some of this Okinawa. It's good. I didn't know that uh, they use mica powders in like ink in, in pen ink i'm guessing calligraphy that's pretty cool i didn't realize that. i mean and i mean really mica powder is also like cosmetics that's i think a, probably where it maybe originated sort of i don't know it's a pretty big big industry i think though and then of course car paint i mean man you can use mica powder for like everything Oh, you're working on a toolbox. Nice. Well, just just to I not I'm not pressuring you, Jim, but just to let you know, I mean, all any quick you can just totally knock something quick out. And if it if it generates 5 bucks in the auction, you know, it there you go for a good cause so if you got time and you can just squeeze one in highly recommend it get some toys for them tots okay so we got our stuff mixed now let's get things kind of set up here I'll show you what i do now one crucial thing i also do the little stir stick kind of method on most of these things sometimes i don't but uh, what I've found is I, I, I like to just, I don't even have a clue if this makes really any difference, but what I've done is just, I add a little bit of a curve at the bottom of this thing and the rest of it's straight. I, I have no clue. I mean, I don't know if it even matters if there's any hook at the end. That's just what I, it works. It seems to work fine for me, so I'm just not changing it. Um, you can use like copper wire for this. This is, I don't know what this stuff is called. It's aluminum craft wire is what I bought. Um, the only thing is, this is fine, but it's like super bendy. And I don't know, like if you want a very specific thing, I think you're almost better off going with something that's less bendy. But I do this at the end and I got a little technique. I forgot to show you guys this when we were doing the, the last video when I was like, here's how I do my pen blanks, my vertical ones. So I'll, I'll show you guys that. I think it makes things easier and a little bit less messy. So we're just, uh, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna wait until the resin reaches about 95 degrees. So we're at 87 or so right now. Um, and again, I, I wanna reiterate, the original one that I, you know, the original live stream, I was waiting until like 130. Now it was really hot in the shop and all this, but there's really no reason to. These pen, for some reason, I always get kind of wigged out when I'm pouring vertically, but 
I think it has to do with the fact that it's a really small hole. Um, you really don't get that much color bleed um, with mica powders, um, I find. So as long as you, with the Lumilite Clear Slow, if you can get it to about 95, you, you're pretty much good to go, um, even in the summer. Um, I think, you know, plus you don't have as much time in the summer anyway. So I've been pretty much using 95 or 100 for all of them, regardless of the temperature in the shop, which makes life way easier than some of the other stuff that I was, you know, doing with um, the bigger ones. Now, when you get into larger, you know, wider pipes and all that kind of stuff, you really want to pour it down like a stick or something like that. Otherwise, it can really bleed because it has more room to kind of move around, I think. So I just wanted to kind of mention that a little bit. Mark Coster, how's it going? Uh, where do you send the item? Um, I have all the information down in the description, Donna. I think probably Amy said. So yeah, and it's on yeah it's on the Turner's where but there's a link to that page down in the description of this video. <laughs> what is someone gonna do with all this stuff when I die? Oh man, that's funny. Oh yeah, it is in Arizona. So let's see where we're at here. 92, we're getting close. And then I just pour a little bit at a time. I mean, there's really, uh, you know, there's not a lot of technique going on here. I don't think <laughs> you don't need to be, make this more, you know, I was, I really was like, oh, I was all worried about a lot of stuff. And I don't really think that there's too many ways that you can screw up pouring like this. Just wait until around 95. Now, you know, if you're using a different resin than this, then the numbers are going to change, those temperatures and all that. Um, I don't know, you know, if you're using like liquid diamonds or total boat or, or some other thing. Um, things change, you know, with the resin type. But with Illumilite Clear Slow, we're good to go. That was 95, so here we go. And I just kind of pour around here. No particular... Uh, I don't know, no real game plan. Don't need to make it, don't make life more difficult than it already is. You know what I mean? I tend to, I don't know if you guys noticed. I will, I will make things as difficult as I can possibly make it. Now, one thing you can do is kind of alter how much you're pouring. If you really want to, you know, you can pour a little drizzle on one round or just kind of dump it, you know, on another. Have fun with it. I think that's really the key here. Doesn't really matter what you do, just have fun with it. And I think that your blanks are probably gonna turn out pretty wicked no matter what you do. And stay safe. And I just, I love these. They're, these colors are just so rich. You can see just on the top of the mold. I mean, you're just like, wow. <laughs> I am anyway. I really love these this color combination. I, I really like that o Okinawa. That is just a really, I don't know. I don't even know what the word is. It's a really good blue, bluish aqua color. And I never seem to be able to fill them like at an equal rate. <laughs> this back one needs a lot more resin in it. Maybe one day I'll get better at that. Oh, 
overflowing that one. That's why I got this cup in the in the bottom. It's gonna really get overflowed when I put that stick in there. I'm gonna try to move some of this a little bit. It's gonna get pretty crazy. Okay. Okay, so we got them pretty much full. So what I do for this stick thing, it's very simple. I just put it down in, twist it, hit the bottom, and then pull it up. But what I do is I put my fingers on there while I'm pulling it up so that it doesn't just get resin. So two things. So it doesn't get resin everywhere. That's one issue. But the other problem is if you don't do this, you end up pulling a ton of resin out of there. Um, and so it's, you know, it's not just because I'm crazy about trying to keep my area clean. Um, it, it also actually does something, um, useful, utilitarian, let's say. One thing that I would recommend, it's not a huge deal, I guess, necessarily, but if you're going to do this, I would recommend try to get into the habit of doing it, like start at the same hole and end at the same one so that you make sure you don't miss any, you know? Um, it probably doesn't matter that much if you do this or not, but um, if you if you try to get in the habit of doing it the same every time, you're not gonna miss, okay? So that's just my little kind of recommendation there. It's always good to have a rag after you do that handy. And then I just top off, because you know we have pulled a little bit out or they weren't totally full. So I'll just top them all off. Um, because uh, the, the, the volume is going to go down a little bit when you pressurize this, or I should just say when it, when it uh, cures. Um, the, the volume will go down because there are a few air bubbles in there and the pressure is going to get rid of them and it, you know, the, it'll, the level is going to go down. So if you want to make sure you try and get them, they're probably never going to get to the top of your mold when you pull them out. But if you want to try to get it close, then you know, top it off and you'll be good to go. So again, I got an easy way to pick this thing up, pop it in the pressure pot, and then um, we're gonna go to 60 PSI. That's what this pressure pot, that's what it goes to. That's the max on this pot. So you never wanna go over the max, of course. So whatever your pressure pot says the max is, don't go above that. And, whoa, <laughs> there we go. Um, whoa, that craziness going on. And then these things will stay in the pressure pot for probably, you know, two, two to four hours somewhere, kind of depending on what the temperature is in the shop and all that. Um, rec uh, the bottle recommends four hours. You're always safe going with four hours on something like this. And then they'll be ready to pull out basically. Jake's here, what's up, man? Oh, got to go. Well, thanks for the super chat. I appreciate it, man. Sweet. Hello and bye. Yeah, kind of a turquoise blue. Yeah. Aqua turquoise. I can never get those. Dice makers. There are cups. Oh, yeah, with the sections. Um, I, I, uh, me, I don't know. I haven't tried one of those. The problem is I've, I have put just you know, two, two colors in the same cup and it just never works out very well. I, I don't think, I think that works a little bit better for this kind of thing. Um, but you know, I, like I, I've even seen Steve McDonald do it. Um, I think it works a little bit better if you're just pouring it kind of flat. Kind of, I don't know. I, I haven't gotten good results just kind of mixing colors together. So, uh, one thing we need to do is fill the Happy fun cup. I'm gonna put it like that. Stuff's getting pretty thick. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, I think 350, I think 50 grams per, per tube is probably, I haven't actually done 350 grams in this mold yet. I've always done 400, but I think 350 is probably plenty. Don't forget the Okinawa. Wow, that's really thick. Tech 
technically you should probably pressurize this, but I think that they're going to turn out okay. I'm going to put it kind of on an angle. I like doing these cups on an angle because you get the, like these crazy kind of things. I saw Ben, I, I got that idea from uh, Ben over at Ben's Works. He does these. Um, and I think he was making, he makes eggs out of his fun cups. And he was putting it on its side and I was like, oh, that is brilliant. Now it's not just like, you know, layer after layer straight. Ben is a pretty good master at resin he does some really good stuff okay and then i just wipe off my sticks and then they're ready to go on the next round you know and then i'll just put these cups aside back here on the on the floor and they'll be ready to use so i'll just pop the stuff out tomorrow now you know like you could maybe try to clean the cups up too i i guess a little bit and i do try to like clean up the front you know like where it's dripping all over the place but I just leave the stuff inside and, and pop out the thing the next day. I find that to be a little bit easier to deal with. There's the... This one doesn't seem to get it on the front as much. It has kind of a rim. All right, so we got that one done. That was just a standard, again, those are gonna be making those, the five and a half inch blanks that I, that I sell. Um, let's see here. Um, so those are, uh, again, oh, what, what the heck just, huh, sold out. Hold on a minute, guys. Those shouldn't be sold out. I don't think. Did I get orders? I don't think so. Hold on a minute. I'm looking something up here. What the heck is going on? I was going to drop a link <laughs> for you guys and then I was looking at the thing and it said it was sold out which I don't it shouldn't be so I, I got those you can pre-order those these blanks now um, there's a link in the description already I don't think that I got any sales so I think that I just screwed up and didn't put the right put any amounts in there I, I like to take a little acetone and wipe these things off just to make sure that I've gotten everything clean. Oh, I need to actually wipe off my, one other thing is I like to wipe off the, the stick, the little mixy dipstick thing. Get all the resin off of that. I, I don't know if you really need to do that, but if you got big clumps of resin um, that are, you know, forming on this thing, it may slightly alter things. I, I don't know. Again, I don't know that it matters, but I just like to clean things off. Now for the next one we're gonna use, we're gonna make, uh, we're gonna do two, two sets. We're gonna make the, the, the kitless size as well. And I don't have a silicone mold for those yet. I just haven't kind of gotten around to it. I'm not sure exactly how I want it to look. So for now, uh, I'm just using the, the PVC pipes on these. So we'll get our, our plugs out. I'm also making less of them anyway, so it just kind of kind of works out. <clears throat> So you always want to spray your PVC pipes before you, um, you know, cast in them. Um, otherwise, your your resin can get stuck pretty easily in there. So let me. Huh. That's weird. Oh, they are in stock. Huh. I don't know what's happening. Something crazy is going on. Okay. So I'll just drop a link in the, the chat here. If you guys want to pre-order these guys. Oh, Mike, did Mike already do that? Um, yeah, and I also have the molds. Again, those are, let's see, which what link is that? I don't know what link that is. Okay, so Mike, link to the molds. Here's a link to the, the blanks. 
And again, they're kind of like a pre-order because we're kind of making them <laughs> right now, you know. I do have a few in stock uh, of the standard length, um, but I don't have any of the, the kit list. So you'll, you can order, pre-order, and you'll get the first dibs on them. Um, but, you know, they're not going to go out until next week, most likely. Um, I like to let my, my blanks fully cure before I send them out. So five days minimum after you pull them out. Rosemary's here. How's it going? Um, let's see. Now what? Okay, so we got to spray our, our thing. I'm just going to go off camera and spray these real quick. Nothing secret about it. You just want to make sure that you, you know, get the tube covered. So I give it a, I give it a good dosing. I spray from both ends. Especially on these longer PVC pipes. My finger gets tired after a while. Okay, so I got those things sprayed. Doesn't need to be like dripping out or anything like that, but like I kind of spray like around a little bit. I try to, you know, make sure that it's coated on the inside. And once you've done this like once, once you've done, you know, given it a good, I, I'd say if this is the first time you're using PVC pipes, give it like a little extra just to make sure. Um, but once you've gotten it done, um, and used it once then you know just just make sure it's coated and everything should be fine and then when I demold these I just use a little I have a, a wooden dowel and just kind of pop them out but they, they should come out pretty easy all right and then these plugs are from Turner's Warehouse there's a link to these guys down in the description as well um, let me yeah so just use that one don't don't worry about putting a link that the, the link is in the description it's an affiliate link so if you use that one um, and then purchase stuff from Turner's Warehouse, they hook me up with a referral bonus. Um, doesn't cost you a dime, just a click. So um, always check the check the description for, for any links for stuff that we are using on the stream or videos or anything like that. Okay, so same thing. I'm going to just grab a bucket, stick it in there, and we're ready to go. <clears throat> Okay, I'm switching gloves out because those ones were kind of slippery. <laughs> and so we're just doing the same mixture, um, but we're doing a little bit more of it. So I got to figure out, I haven't actually done pre-done pre this, so I got to think about um, the total. So these guys make um, an eight and a half inch blank um, after it's cut. So they're about nine inches um, that I get out of there. And so I think, I wanna say it's 450. I gotta look at some other, other blanks that I've made here. Yeah, 450. Um, we'll, we'll, so you can tell like those other ones. So these are a little bit wider diameter and we're only putting 50 grams more in these, you know? So there was quite a bit of ex excess uh, if you're doing 400 with the Gatling mold. So 350 is probably more than enough. <clears throat> 350 grams total for, for that silicone mold. Um, one other thing that I want to mention is, um, so for the, the silicone molds, the, you know, the Gatling silicone mold that we just used, those, I don't have any in stock and, I, and I'm not going to keep them in stock. They're going to be a, a made to order item. So once you order, you know, I'll get it made. It doesn't take that long to make them or anything, but um, it's probably about a week lead time just for me to, you know, get it made, get everything ready to go, and uh, and then get them ready to ship, you know. So let me, <clears throat> let me move this thing out of the way. See, isn't that nice? Now I don't have to worry about resin, <laughs> sticky resin on my, my notebook. Okay, so for the second one, we're doing um, the, the, so those first ones, those are going to be for five and a half inch blanks. I just, I make them five and a half. And then the, the second one is going to be for eight and a half inch blanks. And then it's the same thing again. Um, 40, 30, and 30 is what I'm doing. And again, I don't know if any of this, you know, 40% Okinawa really matters or anything like that. Thirds is probably just fine. It's just how I do it. 
So we're looking at 180 and then 120. Let me just make sure that all adds up. Nope, that doesn't add up. What did I do? That's right. 120, that's not right at all. 135, 135, guys. Please. Calculator's broken. Yeah, that makes 450. Okay, and then let's see here. So, yeah, I think we're going to go with the same amounts here. So, one teaspoon of Okinawa. And then three quarter teaspoon of the other two, Nocon and Dark Ocean. Okay, so we got our game plan set out. Let's see if there's any questions here. No questions, so I think we're ready. I'm gonna move my pad back. I'm gonna go get a few cups. Now another thing that you can do, you know, if you got little little nibs and things in your cup, um, is just grab a ruler or something, something kind of straight edgy with, that you can kind of scrape with. And I'll just kind of go in there and like make sure that there's no, you know, major chunks. I'm kind of scraping the plastic as well, but. Scrape that out and then I just blow it out with the, the air hose. And that'll get you pretty much like, I mean, after you've done that, there's usually really nothing left that's gonna really come off. <clears throat> Oops, wrong way. Okay, so we're gonna zero that out. I need another cup. Uh, where are these things? Uh, these things are... I'm gonna get a new one. not clean enough those other ones all right so we got two cups let's get our colors back out okinawa dark ocean i got another dark ocean don't worry you, you guys might have been looking at it like whoa that's getting pretty low i don't know where it is but Whew. there it is there it is got another dark ocean right here brand new I think I'm just going to kind of consolidate this oops make a mess on my pad I think I got more on the pad than I did in the cup <laughs> in the jar <laughs> oh man yep that's a mess. I'm a mess, guys. Huh. Okay. I got some on this, too. Nice. Share the wealth. Nice thing about this pad is you can just kind of rub it in. And it kind of takes care of the problem. You can even rip some of it off if you want. Okay. So... Okinawa is going in the big cup again. I just want to make sure that I'm not seeing any chatting happening. I'm going to refresh. Maybe you're all buying molds and, and blanks. All right, so quarter teaspoon. This is a quarter. We're doing three quarters in there I need 
more Nocon. Eye candy needs to sell like tubs of this stuff. Um, it's kind of nice. I like the P-Town Subby. They got like the four, what is it, four ounces? Yeah, they got the pretty big jar. These are pretty big. I like I like being able to get that. Eye candy needs to sell like bigger ones. So no con. Dark Ocean. Got our Okinawa. All right. We are set. Oh shoot. Uh, hold on a minute, guys. I think I might have screwed up. Does this work? Oh, wow. They just barely fit in the CA technology spot. Whew. Pretty close. Good thing I thought of that, though. Okay, zeroed that out. We're putting 225 part A. Ooh. And 226, whatever. Close enough. Okay. Ready to rock here. Yeah, I know I don't have room for anything either, but I tend to run out of things pretty quick, especially like um, on some of these, like the Starry Night blanks and stuff. Like I was like, oh man, I gotta order way more when I first like first launches especially or just popular blanks and in some of these like I use Nocon and Dark Ocean for other thing uh, you know a few of the other blanks that I make so you kind of you know once it gets down especially if you got to run if you have to um, if I have to refill you know certain blanks or whatever then I'm like oh I got to get another one Got to get more. Then, then I got to head over to turnerswarehouse.com. Get me some eye candy, some P-Town. All the goodies. I'm really, it's it's awesome. I, I really love having Turner's Warehouse in Arizona because the shipments are so quick being in Nevada. I mean, most orders go out like the next day anyway. Sometimes they go out the same day. I don't know how they do it. Um, and then it's nice because it's pretty close to where I live, you know. Much better than, like, some of the places are, like, you know, Florida or, or like, um, Midwest. And those things take a while, especially in the winter. You can really get kind of screwed sometimes if there's travel things or whatever. Snow going over certain things. If, if they can't fly it, you know. Our airports are closed, so we're we're doing one thirty five. In each of these. And then we need a teaspoon of Okinawa. All 
Um, this is a Sony ZV-E10 camera. I love it. It is fabulous. It works really well for doing content creation. It's got a lot of nifty things and it just looks good. Um, so, uh, and it's pretty cheap actually. It's not, I mean, compared to some of the other ones out there. Um, it's not, not terribly expensive, but it's a pretty good camera. But, you know, I mean, here's the other thing. So like, here's my, that's not what I wanted. Here's my Canon. I mean, it's pretty good. And I put a, I got a, a wide angle lens that it was only like, I think it was like 20 or 30 bucks or something like that to, to get a wide angle. So, I mean, that's not that bad. It's just a handy cam. It's easy. Um, and that's the Vixia HF R800. So just like their handy cam, you know, variant. It's not bad, you know, and it's a lot cheaper, I think. So it just depends. But if you want to go for the Sony ZV-E10, this one, it's definitely a better picture. Sharper, I would say. Um, and it's, you can change the lenses out. You know, it's a mirrorless. So it's a pretty good camera um, overall. I got to pay attention here because these ones are a little bit longer. <laughs> I should get going here. Yo-yo sources? Oh, yo, oh, I see. Yeah. I thought you were saying Turner's Warehouse is a yo-yo. I thought your yo-yo was like a some kind of terminology, and I'm like, I'm not getting it. You're literally talking about yo-yos. I like that. The only issue that I have, and this has nothing to do with the camera, I don't think. I haven't tried anything different yet, but I will be soon. Um, it, I don't think that it, um, I don't know. The, the picture, at least on my in OBS when I'm looking at this and I need, I don't know, I should probably double check on the, the actual live feed, but I think that it's a little stuttered, but I think it's because I don't actually have a USB 3.0 jack <laughs> that you're supposed to be plugging into with this thing. Um, I have the, uh, the Elgato cam link, um, but it, it requires a USB 3.0 plug but i don't have one that, that they're they're broken on my computer so i think that's the problem it's not the throughput isn't enough so i think it could be even better basically is what i'm saying it's just the other camera doesn't really stutter like that and and i i'm pretty sure i have all the settings correct i don't know I'm going to be switching. I have a, a another computer that I'm going to be hooking up, but it's a Mac. And it just, I don't exactly, it's going to change some stuff. I'm probably not going to be using OBS, uh, OBS Studio anymore, possibly. No. You don't see stutter? Huh. Seems, well, yeah. I don't know. It just feels stuttery to me. Oh, that's the wrong one. This one, I don't know. This one just seems smoother to me. Maybe not. I don't know. It's probably just me. It might actually have to do with the um, OBS and, you know, just the, I don't know, something. Okay, so we're getting close. Um, now, you might notice, you know, we had seven blanks on that Gatling mold. For the, you know, five and a half inch or the six inch tall one. Um, these there's only five and i think five is kind of pushing it a little bit even um other molds like silicone molds that i've seen for like two uh kitless ones are like four and so depending on what you're doing temperatures and a lot of different things i, I don't know that you really want to go too much more than like than five and you may even want to just stick with four um for these longer ones i don't know i'm gonna get them done there, there there's no problems but this isn't one that you really want to be messing around with. It's, uh, 
you want to you want to kind of get to it and, and get things done because it starts kind of getting gooey at the end i could probably start pouring i don't know i gotta be honest i think i could start pouring these at like 90 even it's just tough because my like the the my golden rule with alumilite clear is like nothing below 95 <laughs> but i think i could get away with it and it'd be fine the color so this one's color is better is that what you're saying yeah that one's a little bit uh that one's a little bit bright i kind of played with it and i kind of i don't know i kind of liked this one kind of like it i don't know it is a little bit off it's a little bit warmer i like i kind of like that all right well it, have fun at church and like i said you know you know that these things are always up later so it'll be here if you have any questions leave a comment down below and i'll get back to you all right so we're pretty close 94 0.5 and the 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 more pours you have to do the longer it takes right so if you pour more resin at per pass you'll get through it a little bit quicker but i've found that you know originally i was dumping quite a bit per pass you know of, of the resin and i like the less better i mean i was i was dumping quite a bit uh, when i like the first ones that i did of these vertical ones so i think you're going to probably get better results doing more passes with less resin per pass but it also kind of depends on what you're going for you know And you can mix it up and do whatever you want. Like I said, I think the important thing when you're pouring these things is just to have fun with it. Do whatever you want, because I think you're gonna get pretty good results pretty much no matter what you do. Good enough results, at least. You know, you may find some technique that seems to give you, you know, some result that you kind of like, maybe a little bit better than something else, but I don't think that there are too many ways to really screw this up, you know. I think that's that's the important part of it. You might see it's getting a little thick already. So I got to, you know, I'm going to start kind of picking up the pace a little bit here. I think we still have plenty of open time, but it is getting a little bit thicker. I can feel it already. <clears throat> getting pretty close. Again, I got these two are, are higher than the these other three. I don't know.
Okay, now I do the stick thing again, but I have a longer one for these, the, you know, the longer tubes. Hopefully you can see that kind of. And so again, <clears throat> and I just kind of twist it and then I, I put my fingers on the, the stick so that I don't pull all the resin out. It kind of stays in place. One's a lot longer. Takes a little bit longer. So again, that's, you know, that's why, I, I don't know, I, I wouldn't really want to do like seven or ten of these really longer, you know, like the eight and a half or longer ones. I think you're better off staying with like, you know, five. I don't know. I could maybe get seven of these things done, but I think you're going to feel rushed, you know. Okay, and like I said, it's always good to have a rag kind of handy after you do that, so you're not getting resin all over your um, the screws on your pressure pot and all that kind of stuff. Pretty thick here. There we go. I like to just top them off. Okay, and let's see here. I'm sure, if you can, yeah, you can't really see. There we go. Now you can see it. Oh, that one's full. <laughs> How about we go over here? We're gonna go over here. Okay, and they're ready. You just pop them in the pressure pot. Um, again. Make sure, I had to kind of check. I usually put these long ones in the, the, um, the other pressure pot, the California Air Tools one, because it's a little bit taller than my other one. Luckily, this fits in the, the CA Technologies as well. But always make sure before, I, and I have, a, I have my five gallon too, but I don't really love using that one. Um, always make sure, you know, like on a new mold, uh, make sure that it fits and that things are going to get into your pressure pot the way you think they are. Um, do a dry run before you actually start mixing resin um, so, that, so that you don't get it all done and you're like, oh, it doesn't fit. Or I've, I've actually had molds where they were so like wide that I couldn't get my, you couldn't get it in the pressure pot. Like you couldn't get your hands around the mold or hold it in any way to drop it down in <laughs> and i was like oh man so just always kind of think of try to think ahead of time you know like okay how's this actually going to work when i get this thing you know ready let's get this thing back in right there i'm just going to wipe off my sticks maybe fill up that thing a little bit and then we're all done So I'm excited. Um, we're going to turn one of these guys on Saturday um, and see how they look, you know, see what's going on with these things. So we'll turn a pen up. Um, I wish I could just like, well, two things. I wish I had the skill, knowledge, you know, um, but also the like enough time to do a kitless pen with one of these. That would be pretty cool. But we'll just do a regular pen because I'm pretty, I've only done like two kitless pens ever and my skills are not particularly awesome. Definitely not good enough to be doing that live. <laughs> it would, I, it takes like all of my focus and concentration, so it'd be like a terrible live stream. Okay, there's really not enough Okinawa to dump in the Happy Fun Cup. I think we can pour. Uh, that's pretty thick. I'm just gonna leave it. Oh, the blue's okay. Sorry, I didn't get that on camera. Ooh. 
pretty thick. Kind of like honey. Okay. Got those. Got a little bit more in there. Put these down. I just let these kind of cure on the ground there. And then I like to do a little bit of acetone on a, on a rag. Um, sometimes I just wipe my fingers off even with that so I'm not getting resin all over the place if I'm not going to take the gloves off. Um, but I like to clean off the stick and do all that kind of stuff and then I'm ready to rock and roll for the next round. Um, especially if you're using dyes, um, you really want to wipe off the stick with like some acetone or, or denatured alcohol or something um, because you don't want to contaminate like if you're going to do another dye mixture or something like that in the next cup. Um, if you add some dye on the stick and you started, you know, and you used it right away, you could alter your colors basically. So um, just always, always a good idea to kind of clean everything up. All right, so let's see here. Let's see what you guys are doing in here. Jen's here, what's up? Let's see, James was asking about kitless. Um, so uh, it's not a very pretty kitless pen, but I can show you an example. Uh, yeah. yeah. I made one that turned out okay. It's not super amazing. Um, but basically, instead of having the tube and, and a bunch of, you know, like metal parts, you just basically take the blank and create the entire pen out of it. The only components that are added that are manufactured are the nib and your um, ink well, which I don't even have one attached, but um, which is kind of weird. So the way that you do these, you're going to cut threads into your blank, in, you know, into the, the material itself, and then you can assemble all the parts. That's pretty cool. Um, again, I'm not, I really have made like two in my life. Um, I wouldn't consider these particularly amazing. Um, there are a lot of people that make just fabulous kitless you know or sometimes people call them bespoke pens out there and it's really cool if i had more time you know i'm doing videos i'm trying to keep my you know the blank sales and all that kind of all these things if i wasn't doing all these different things i would probably personally focus on kitless pens because i just i really love the idea of being able to make the entire thing you know uh, myself like and especially for me i'm making the blank even so you know you're doing everything and then just slapping a nib in there now that was a fountain pen um, that's typically what people make but you can also use you can make them roller balls as well if you want they're a little bit different i think it's actually kind of easier to make a fountain pen um, so that's what that's what those kitless ones are and the thing is uh, so the kitless blanks are longer because you really kind of need more material um, because there's like work holding that has to go on. And if you're trying to keep like the kind of swirl patterns and everything somewhat flowing, which you might've noticed on, on mine, not really, <laughs> not really a, a pattern flowing going on on this one. And it's because I wasn't using a, you know, I was just using standard blanks. And there's actually, I think two different pen blanks um, that the cap and the body are made out of. So not, not super spectacular. It was fun to make though. Um, the only thing that I will say about, about these, they're really not hard to make. Um, I wouldn't, I would not say that they're like difficult or like super hard to make. There's quite a few steps that you need to kind of keep in order. Um, and, and, you know, you're going to need like different drill bits. You're going to need tap and die and some, some like, you know, like specialty kind of equipment, I would say, you know, compared to just turning a, a kitted pen. So it's a little bit different, but I got to be honest, it's really not that hard um, to get going. And you can do it on a wood lathe. So it's pretty cool, pretty fun stuff. But most, you know, you make the kitless blanks longer so that they have, you know, more more material to, uh, to you know, make the, the body, the, the cap, and the section if they want to out of.
Um, no, there's really, well, you could try to soak something in, ac in, uh, in acetone. Is that what I did? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, acetone might do it, but I mean, you're talking like you're gonna have to leave it in there for like a week and it's maybe gonna get kind of soft. I don't know if that's really, depending on the situation, I don't know if that's really gonna be helpful. Um, but there's really no way to soften it. Heat, you could like use a heat gun and try and that'll, that can soften things. But it just depends on the thickness of, of what, what you're dealing with. You know, like if it's like an inch thick or something, it, it may take a while with a heat gun or, or whatever. You could try putting it like in an oven and it can kind of get bendable. Um, so there's a couple different ways, I guess. It just depends on what your what what the what the deal what, specifically what's going on and what you need. But there's really no way to like dissolve these resins. They, there's there's there are chemicals, but they will dissolve anything basically. So and, and they're not um, they're like a hazmat um, kind of thing. No, I don't really get any bubbles. Now, the only thing is if you let it go too long, eventually, um, like if it's if if it's too thick and, and you know, basically if it kind of set up before you got it in the pressure pot, that could cause air bubbles. Um, if there's moisture in your airline, that could do it. Um, but no, I don't I don't find bubbles in, in the blanks at all. Mm. well yeah you shouldn't trap the the if you have a pressure pot it's going to get rid of any air bubbles that are in there um so the only other thing is maybe you didn't leave it in the pressure pot long enough because if you release the pressure before it's fully set up then it's the the, the air bubbles just grow back so I've seen it where you, you get the blanks in too late and it doesn't really work. But I've also seen it if you pull it too soon, it's not gonna work. Um, it'll, they'll just grow right back. Yeah, T Turner's Warehouse has all the stuff that you need to do kitless pen turning. Um, they have a whole section of it. Um, what, what we need to do is get Chad to do a video showing us how to do it though. That would be sweet. All right, so is there any other things going on? I, I probably missed a bunch of questions and stuff, but I don't know. Let's see here. I don't think, I don't know. I'm just kind of skimming, see if I miss any questions. Yeah, I'm not sure what with the solid resin thing. <clears throat> I'm not sure why pressure would make it different either. Hmm. Yeah, it it really has no bearing on it, like Mike said. Okay. So I don't see any other chat is you're working on it. Yes. Sweet. Cause I, I there's, I have no business doing videos on that. Cause I don't know what I'm doing. First time using mold release. Yeah. It'd be, yeah. Like moisture can cause some issues with bubbles and things like that. And Mold release shouldn't do it, but maybe, you know, like depending on which one you're using. I've never had stoner, the, this purple one. I've never had it react with epoxy or um, urethane, either of them. That, it works great. Um, I'm pretty sure this universal mold release works for anything. I mean, you can use it for silicone even. Um, so it works on anything and shouldn't react. But if it's a mold release that was made for resin, it, probably, it shouldn't really react or cause any issues. Oh, Ooh, the algorithm brought you very sweet. Awesome. Thank you, algorithm. 
I'm glad you could make it. Sorry, we, we just finished. Uh, so I don't know if you saw the whole thing. Um, if you didn't see the beginnings and all that kind of stuff, you can watch the replay. It'll be up when we end. But we're pretty much on our way out here. I'm just kind of wrapping things up. Um, but, yeah, the kitless kit. <laughs> I said kitted, maybe. I'm not sure. What were the water? So they're, they're pen blanks to make pens out of. Uh, let me go get a pen for you that might be sort of representative of what this might sort of look like in the end. <clears throat> so we were pouring them, and it's not going to come out looking with these steps. Let me, let me hold on. Stop. Don't look at that. This is what we're going to get out of, out of those. Okay, so when, when I pull them out of the silicone mold, they're just going to be a, a rod, basically. And then what we do is we make a pen out of them. So you can either do it this way, or I was kind of showing people the, the kit list blanks. Um, that one has a kit, and, and the difference for anybody that doesn't really know what I'm talking about with kits, kit lists. So the kit part of this is all of these things are, are made like in Taiwan in a factory, you know, the, the, the metal parts. Um, and and you, you basically turn those things. There's a little brass tube that goes in, be, in, in the middle of the blank. And then all of these parts are pressed into that tube. Now, the other way is you just do what they call a kitless or bespoke pen. And so you're just making the entire pen out of the blank. So there's a couple different things that you can make out of them. Um, and you, you can make handles, you know, with this stuff. We use it on, on a, uh, we, we turn it, they call it, on a lathe, um, like a woodworking lathe machine. And so that's how you get all those things. It's pretty cool. Pretty fun stuff. Um, check out some of my other videos. Um, I, I make, you know, different projects and things out of resin. Um, I also, my business is selling pen blanks to pen turners. Oh. That pen pops. Yeah, that one's a fun one. I really like those, uh, the swirly things. <laughs> Marijuana. Nope. We don't have any of those around here. You're going to have to spend some money. Sweet. <laughs> cool. So anyway, guys, I think that we're going to wrap things up. I got a few other things. I'm still trying to catch up on crazy. This, this week, it was one of those weeks where like nothing, you know, like you got nowhere on anything kind of thing is how I felt. So I actually have to wrap up the mystery box video today. Um, we're going to get like the last few shots, the closing stuff, um, but that's done. So again, I think I mentioned it at the beginning, but on Wednesday next week, what's going to happen is, so the mystery box, you know, the Turner's Warehouse sent, they sent the fourth one. Um, it's a Halloween theme. It's going to be pretty cool. Um, but uh, we're going to do a premiere at 3 p.m. on Wednesday next week. So basically when the live stream would, would start, we're going to do the premiere for the mystery box video, and then we're going to just roll into the live stream. It'll, it'll literally just, it should, I'm, I haven't done this yet, but there's a way where it, it basically, if you're watching the, the premiere video, it'll just roll right into the live stream and you'll be good to go. Um, so we're, we're going to do that on Wednesday, 3 p.m. Pacific time. So it should be pretty fun. And I think that is about it. But before that, Saturday, we're going to turn one of these blanks into a pen. Um, so for Barry, if you want to see what we're making, you know, like I'm going to actually make a pen out of it on Saturday's live stream. So that's at noon Pacific time if you want to come back and join us. So make sure to subscribe so you get notified when and hit that little the notification bell thing. That'll let you know when I'm when I'm going live and all that kind of good stuff. So, oh, that's cool. I, I I'm glad I could help out. We're having we just like to have fun and share what what I know. Um, pretty pretty fun stuff. I, when I got started with this stuff, like there was not a lot of information out there. What I really like about it now is there are so many people willing to share information and like ideas and you know projects that it's it's really great that there's there's so much information out there now. So. I'm not, you know, I'm not one of a handful of people anymore. There's tons of people, so it's pretty cool. We got a good community with resin casting. So anyway, guys, thanks for joining the fun today. Like I said, come back Saturday at noon, and we will turn one of these guys up and make a pen out of it. I cannot wait. If you want to buy any of the, like basically kind of pre-order 
um, basically get in line because we I have five of the aqua blanks that could ship out right away um, the standard length but those kitless ones that we just made those are the first ones so if you want to get in line and get yours kind of claimed um, you can head over to my website and order the blanks I'm just going to drop a link. Why not drop a link? We'll do some shameless plugs at the end. And then also um, for the, the Gatling mold, if you want to get the silicone mold that we were using for the, the five in it, this makes a six inch pen blank, um, seven, seven of them. Um, these are made to order. Um, so when you order one, then I'll make it. Um, but they're available as well. You can get the kind of kind of pre-order, I guess, or whatever going on, on, the, on the website. So there's those links. And so anyway, guys, like I said, thanks for joining the fun today. I hope you have a great evening and I will see you guys on the next stream.